Hello everyone, welcome to another Tuesday Tech Tip at 45 Drives, Brett Kelly here. So this week we're going to try something new, something fun. Um, well, I guess not completely new, I'm going to keep talking about Optane, uh, in particular the Intel Optane devices and why they're so amazing. I promised you guys that a couple videos ago. So uh, yeah, this week I was going to do some research and present it to you guys, but uh, I figured let's try something new. We have a friend over at Intel, Paul Genua, and he offered to join us and give me give you guys the rundown. So uh, why not hear it directly from the source themselves? Paul's going to hop on here. Paul's going to go over the ins and outs of why Optane's so great. He's going to touch on well, what is it and why it's different than what's currently available in the market and what that means to you, the end user. Why is it so much better? So without further ado, thanks, Paul, mainly for saving me a bunch of time on research. Uh, why don't I turn it over to you and uh, tell us about Optane. Thank you, Brett. I really appreciate you having me here. My name's Paul Genoa, as Brett mentioned. I am an engineer in the field for Intel. I support our SSD products or non-volatile memory solutions in the field. Uh, so I'm going to talk a little about Optane and what makes it different and what makes it special and, and why it does really well in some use cases, like Brett's example here of a cache, caching a Ceph cluster. So I have like two or three slides I want to show, really, because I think they might add to this. So let me jump into that. I first have you know, our legal disclaimer, because I'm showing you some slides. <clears throat> I, and then I want to start here. This is what we call the memory and storage hierarchy, right? It shows you know, at the top, I have CPU caches, and they are the most expensive, smallest, fastest memory in a system. Right. If I look at a CPU cache up here, CPU cache might be a couple of meg in size, but they're really fast. L1 cache might be single cycle latency. So fast and small. Uh, and they're usually made with SRAM. Right? I'm storing charge in a transistor. Uh, DRAMs are right below that. DRAM is pretty fast. It's the next level of speed under, under a cache. Right? It's the next in the memory hierarchy. I may have I may have eight gig, sixteen gig on a client system. On a server, I may go up to you know two hundred gig or so. I have a Xeon myself with one ninety two gig of of RAM in it. Uh, it's pretty fast. Uh, it, it's expensive still, not quite as expensive as a CPU cache. As we move further down here, right. Um, I have all the way at the bottom, I have hard drives, right? Hard drives are massive. I may have tens of terabytes of hard drive space uh, and that's stored magnetically. Um, I'm creating ones and zeros with magnetic charge on a platter, on a spinning disc. Uh, they're cheap, they're slow. Right above it in this greenish area are NAND SSDs. NAND stores charge in a transistor as well. I actually can store electrons in that transistor and read back if it's a 1 or a 0. NAND SSDs are a lot faster than hard drives, but they're not quite as big. I may have you know, a couple of terabytes on a client machine. I might have a terabyte on data center. I may have 8, 10, 16 terabyte uh, SSDs. They're much faster than hard drives. Optane fits right in between DRAM and NAND SSDs. Optane is our brand name for this technology. It's actually fundamentally different. We talked about DRAM storing charge. I don't remember if I mentioned, but DRAM stores charge in leaky capacitors. It's storing electrons in leaky capacitors, and it bleeds off, and then it refreshes. NAND SSDs, we're storing charge in a transistor, and eventually that transistor, the dielectric in there, wears out, and you know the transistor wears out. Optane isn't storing electrons. It's not storing charge that way. It actually changes the atomic structure of the media itself to read back and figure out if it's a one or a zero. So it stores ones and zeros atomistically. It changes the whole structure of the media. So Optane, we do have different products. We have Optane DIMMs. We have Optane data center persistent memory, which are DIMMs, and we have Optane SSDs. So we have making different devices based on the same media. It's just, the point here is it so fits somewhere between DRAM and SSDs in the storage hierarchy in terms of cost and performance, and it's fundamentally different. It, the physics behind it are very different than anything else out there. So 
I want to so, so to highlight, you know, why is it different and how does this work? I wanted to talk a little bit about how do we store data, not charge, right? How do we store data in an SSD? So if I look at a typical a NAND SSD, NAND SSD, uh, we start off with a sector. And this is the minimum data that you can read. And that's uh, 512 bytes. So that comes from hard drive days. I have a sector of 512 bytes. Then if I wanted to write data, I actually write data in a page. And a page is, is actually eight sectors. So eight times 512 is 4K. So I have to write 4K at a time. Now that's a write operation. If I wanted to erase NAND, I actually have to erase a full erase block. And an erase block will be somewhere, you know, these are all, uh, it all depends on the device, 128 pages. So that's going to be somewhere around 512K. You know, a lot of erase blocks. So how does this work? It, it works great if I'm doing large sequential transfers. You know, I'm going to write a full sector, I'm going to write a full page, and I'll write, you know, full erase blocks sequentially. That's great. Where things break down are small random reads or uh, writes in particular. Uh, that changes things. If I wanted to write a byte, four bytes, eight bytes, you know, something small, uh, smaller than a page, let's say, if I want to write, you know, five, twelve bytes, let's say I'm writing, you know, four bytes, I'm writing this block right here, what happens? Well, I actually have to write this full 4K. I write a 4K page at a time. So I will most likely do a read, modify that little bit, and write it back. Now what happens, so I did that, what happens if two seconds or two minutes later, I want to change, you know, a byte over here? I want to change another byte. Well, what happens is I will do a read, modify, write. So I will actually read the current page, copy the data with this new, new byte that I'm writing, and invalidate the old one. So what does that do? That leads us with a lot of fragmentation. I can't just erase this page, this one page, and rewrite data to it. I actually have to erase 128 pages at a time. I have to erase a whole erase block. So in a NAND SSD, I'm left with a lot of fragmentation. I don't know if you remember back in you know my Windows 98 days, for example, I had to defrag my hard drive all the time. And it was somewhat similar. I have gaps in there where I have data I don't need. So two things, I need to defrag and that is actually a background task the firmware on a SSD does for you. So in the background, it's defragging that drive. Uh, but I also need temp space for this to work, right? I did a, a copy. So I actually need spare area on that drive to do that copy. So I wanted to talk about this because Optane is different. None of this happens in Optane. <clears throat> So this is in NAND. I have to actually have read a sector, write a page, erase an erase block. In Optane, if I want to change a byte over here, I can write that, that byte. I can write it to a 1 or a bit. I can write it to a 1 or a 0. That's it. There's no erase cycle. I write a 0 or I write a 1. There's no fragmentation then. There's no read, modify, writes. There are no copies. It changes the game fundamentally. It makes it very, very different. So that is one of the things that's different in Optane. So what does that give me? Well, in the middle here, um, that gives me better endurance right off the bat. Optane, because of the physics behind it, because of how the material is made, and somewhat because of that garbage collection defragmentation, I get much higher endurance with an Optane drive. With a traditional NAND SSD, a data center class SSD, I may get one to three drive writes per day. That's how they're rated. So if I bought a one terabyte drive and it's one drive write per day, I can write one terabyte to that drive every day for the warranty period, which in most cases for Intel at least is five years. So I could write one terabyte to that drive every day for five years. Or in this case, I'm showing a three, ter three drive write per day, so I could write three terabytes to that drive every day for five years before it wears out. With Optane, that's 60 drive writes per day, six zero. 
that's an order of magnitude bigger. I can write 60 terabytes to that drive every day for five years before it wears out. That's humongous, humongous, and most people won't see that much data. So I get higher endurance. The next thing is over here is latency, read latency. I'm going to blow this up because I, I actually love this slide. Uh, so here we're showing read latency. Read latency is how long does it take for data to come back to me once I read it? Once the CPU asks for the data, how long does it take? On a hard drive, it takes a while because I have a spinning platter and I have to wait for that to spin all the way around and the drive heads to actuate and read that data back. SSD is faster. I activate the transistors and I read it back. But what happens to my read latency when I am writing to that drive? So remember, I have those read modify rates going on, and it will actually slow down. I don't know if anyone has experienced this, but reads to an SSD slow down, typically, while I am writing to that drive. So here in the gray, I'm showing one of our NVMe SSDs. So this is a, a relatively high-end SSD. It's our P4600. It's, it's a NVMe data center class SSD. And you can see my read latency is this gray uh, bar going up. The yellow stair step here is progressively harder writes to the drive. So we start at zero all the way down here and we go up to just around 700 megabytes per second of write pressure, progressively harder writes. So what we're plotting is how long do my reads take as I'm writing more and more data to this drive? And we can see that the read latency, the time for the read to come back, goes up a lot. As I'm writing more, we go up from you know less than 100 microseconds or less than 200, I should say, to you know, 1,200 microseconds, something in that range. And maybe you've experienced this. All the way on the bottom, this blue, it looks like the x-axis. That's Optane. That's our P4800X. The read latency is not affected by write pressure in the same way at all. So you can see my read response stays constant even as I'm writing more and more data to this drive. That's, it's totally fundamentally different. So that affects us while I'm writing to the drive, but it actually is another uh, side effect is when the drive is full. I don't know if anyone's experienced this either. When a NAND drive is almost full, remember I need all that swap space, I need temp space to do those read modify writes in a NAND SSD. Well, as a drive fills up, I have less temp space. I have to maybe wait for the defrag operation to free up temp space. That will slow down operations to my drive. Optane doesn't have that. So it helps us with read pressure, or with write pressure, my read response with write pressure, but also I get faster response as my drive is full too. So many, many different cases here. So th that, those were my couple of slides. So that's what Optane is. What, what does it do for me, right? I got latency, and we just talked about it. I have latency, especially with smaller random reads and writes. Um, I, I will have much better latency response. That could be useful for anyone that has an application that, that is latency sensitive. Uh, SQL database, for example. I want to be able to read and write my transactions really quick. Or a Ceph cluster. I want to read my files relatively quick. If I'm doing photo editing, I want my photo to come back and not pixelate while it's reading off the, off the shared drive, off the shared folder somewhere. So I, I want relatively low latency in many applications. Endurance. Uh, we have the endurance of the drive itself. So the Optane is a 60 drive writes per day. But if I'm using it as a cache, as Brett's using here, so he's using a cache in front of a Ceph cluster, right, a bunch of OSDs, it, it, because the Optane drive has such high endurance, if I had SATA SSDs as my OSD, it could actually help preserve endurance of that whole data store. Remember, in a cache, if I'm using it as a write cache, my writes hit the Optane first. They don't all hit the, the regular SSDs, the NAND SSDs behind that, so I could preserve endurance of my drives after that, which is big as well. And the last thing many people don't think of is CPU utilization. Many times, I'm running out of performance, what do I do? I increase memory, I get a bigger CPU. That doesn't always work. 
it doesn't help if I can't feed the CPU. And we've seen many cases of people going up to a big Xeon platform, Xeon uh, Platinum core in their system, and they're getting very low CPU utilization because they can't feed the core. The drives actually can't provide the data fast enough for that core to work on it. I have one example I'm, I'm running through right now where I'm doing video rendering. And I'm rendering on an NVMe SSD, and this is an i7 core. Uh, my NVMe SSD, during that render cycle, it's only providing data fast enough to that core to keep it 70% utilized. So I'm not using that whole core that I bought. I bought a big core, for example. When I just, I just switched to an Optane SSD and off of the NVMe SSD, so I thought NVMe was already fast, now I switched to Optane, and all of a sudden my CPU goes from 70% utilization to 100% utilization. So it's, it's, it's the last part of that puzzle, is feeding the core. So I have really Optane, what does it give me? It gives me low latency, high endurance, and gives me the ability to feed that core. So that, that's really what I wanted to share a little about what Optane is and how you might use it. And if you, I'm, a, I'm around, I'm available. I'd love to help any of you, you know, get started with Optane. If you have questions, please put them in the comments and I, I'd love to help out. Thanks a lot, Brett. I really appreciate being here. Maybe we can do it again sometime too. All right, so that's the rundown on everything Optane. Thank you, Paul, so much for all your time. Thanks for joining us on our Tech Tuesday series. We loved having you. Uh, for those at home, we do have some more content with Paul and Intel coming out uh, outside of our Tech Tuesday series. So stay tuned for stuff like that. And as always, I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. Questions, comments, something else you want to see, uh, let us know below and uh, catch you next week.